I really, really like the Venezia. It's a ship that has a very specific niche, but does that niche incredibly well. And that comes down to having sap and having this incredible alpha strike for a cruiser. Honestly, most cruisers don't have this ship's ability to do a ton of damage in a single salvo. They may have that a little bit with the armor piercing on their ship, but AP is nowhere near as consistent as sap is. Assuming you aim properly, of course, but sap has some special properties. It's not high explosive, but it's not armor piercing. It has a lot of the alpha damage that AP does, but usually you're not gonna Citadel people, unless you're in a battleship, one of the Italian battleships, and you're facing a light cruiser. But Venezia isn't going to be getting that Citadel damage, maxing out that alpha. What it does get is full pen damage. Since full pens are doing 33% of that theoretical max damage of the shell, it does so much more than armor piercing does. The consistency, since AP is going to overpen far more often than sap is going to, since sap really can't overpen. All you have to worry about are shatters. So that's why we're gonna aim into the upper belt of a Yamato. We're gonna aim up a little bit higher on ships to hit into their superstructure and upper belt that we know we can pen. Unfortunately, I didn't click my smoke screen in time. I hadn't played Venezia in a long time since this game was a little bit rough then because I make a few mistakes. And that was one of them. I didn't realize my concealment was so bad since I am running heavy sap and HE here. And that's why we just did 16,000 damage to that Hindenburg with sap. No citadels, no fires, no damage over time, just straight 16k. That's the strength of this ship. And honestly, it's really, really fun to play. I think if you don't have the Venezia, you should really try and get this ship. The grind, I didn't find to be too bad since I really enjoyed using Sap. It was very different and unique. And at lower tiers, you don't have this volume of fire like the Venezia does, 15 shells going out, but it still does really, really good damage. And honestly, the fuel smoke, I just love. I think you guys know this from my uh, Italian battleship games, but I really enjoy having this fuel smoke. It's an aggressive get out of jail free card kind of tool where you're able to play so much more aggressive and bold and try and make plays. And if they don't work out, well, you just have a smoke screen to get yourself out of that bad position. I really, really have a lot of fun with it. And on these cruisers, it's even better since you have a decent smoke firing penalty, you can actually shoot your guns from inside these smokes semi-consistently. It's not quite Napoli levels. Napoli's actually kind of in crazy, a little bit crazy for that, but it's still decent enough we can shoot out of our smoke screens. Since this Elbing is going to stop for us again, we may as well send some more sap this way. <laughs> this poor guy is getting absolutely destroyed by this sap. That was a, another pretty big hit. Not quite 10k there, but this thing crushes destroyers. And that's why you see it in competitive a lot, because you're gonna run one of these pretty close behind your friendly spotting destroyer. And when your DD gets into an engagement with an enemy, well, having 15 sap shells on the way tends to help you win fights a lot more quickly than you otherwise would have. So even ships like Shimakaze or really stealthy DDs that don't have a lot of gun power compared to a Marceau or a Kleber, that kind of thing, can win some of those engagements assuming they have Venezia as backup. It's a lot of fun to play that role and just crush a destroyer right off the bat. This Elbing though is going to get away. We're not quite going to uh, get to him in time before he goes behind the island. Yamato overmatches into us, so that's gonna do a ton of damage. And we just use our smoke screen. Get out a jail free card, right? We're in a tough spot, but the smoke is going to help us. And you can see the dotted dark red line on the minimap is our smoke firing range. So we know we're not gonna get spotted when we're shooting within our smoke, assuming no enemy 
is within that circle. So we get some free damage on this Yamato. It allows us to heal up a little bit, maybe get some cooldowns done on our consumables, getting us closer to our next heal, our next damage control, that kind of thing. You did see I hit a torpedo and it didn't do a lot of damage, around 8,000. And that's because these torps are slow, but they're long range and they do very little damage. And they're not your main damage output by any means, but they are good to just toss out randomly. And sometimes you're gonna get hits. You'll notice I constantly am sending them beside islands, into choke points, that kind of thing. But really your main damage output is these guns. And something I love about long reload, high alpha damage cruisers, Atago fits into this category as well, by the way, is that you can angle and maneuver between these shots. Your DPM is not impacted by you dodging shells. So these cruisers that rely on this very quick reload to get their damage in don't have the opportunity to wiggle like we are right now. They have to stay at a consistent angle to make use of their DPM. And that's how you can win a lot of these engagements that maybe you shouldn't have. <laughs> I think of ships like Wooster are really susceptible to this, where as soon as you angle properly to bounce AP, you're losing a ton of DPM. So you have to stay at an angle where you're vulnerable to AP to get your DPM away. Whereas a Venezia doesn't have to worry about that at all. You can see we constantly are wiggling back and forth. I don't even have both rudder mods, which some people love to use. And honestly, it's a really good build. I'll talk about that later. But it really promotes this playstyle of wiggling back and forth, constantly being angled, changing your position, and dodging shells. It works really, really well. And I love these longer reload cruisers because it allows for that kind of optimal playstyle, I guess. It gives you something interesting to do in between salvos. And honestly, I do find it quite a productive thing to do as well. Reducing incoming damage is very important when you're playing a cruiser. These ships can die very quickly. You saw how much damage the Yamato did to me early on. And so it's really nice to have something that is so evasive and can somewhat deal with some of these battleships through the smoke and through its dodging. Unfortunately though, this Kremlin has pushed in with a lot of HP, there's a Stalingrad coming, and this Brindisi needs to die. So I use my smokescreen to try and get a little distance between myself and the Kremlin, and then just try and kill this Brindisi. Unfortunately, my aim was a little off, so I spent pretty much my entire smokescreen missing, and that was the only time I hit this Brindisi. <laughs> my inexperience, or not playing the Venezia for a, quite a while, kind of showed through there, and I wasn't able to get the kill in time. Uh, I think the Brindisi will eventually go down, but honestly, the game is over at this point. We've lost, we may as well try and make a last attempt at pushing in and trying to get some work done. This Kerr first is the one that actually won the game for the enemy team, kind of crushing our entire northern flank up there. So I'm a little bit nervous, but since this ship has 30 millimeters of armor, I know we can bounce a lot of the Kerr first damage since the 406s or 420 millimeter guns can't actually overmatch our side and deck armor. So we're gonna bounce a lot. And if he does get hits, it's probably gonna be overpens, the odd full pen, that kind of thing. So not too much to worry about here. And we're just gonna send our sap into his superstructure. This is one downside of sap though you can't really do great damage to some of these heavily armored battleships, the Kremlin, the Kerfirst, where their upper belt is enough to shatter the sap. So sending the sap into the superstructures that are saturated tends to not go so well. The damage is okay, but it's nowhere near what we were seeing on the Yamato, for example, earlier. That's why I'm trying to go after lighter armor targets rather than these heavier ones, at least at the start. Here though, the game is over, we die, and have two kills and nearly 235,000 damage. A really good result, especially since I haven't played this ship in a very long time. And I think that's why I really think you should try this ship, because it's so unique, it's a very different playstyle than most of these DPM cruisers we see at tier 10. So the build I'm running is admittedly a little bit greedy since we are running heavy HE and SAP, but that's how I'm getting those massive, massive alpha strikes. It's still decent without it, 
but honestly bumping that sap up to near 6,000 alpha, which means 33% of that is going to be our full pan damage per shell. And then you're sending 15 of those out every time you shoot. It's pretty good. Unfortunately though, it does mess with the concealment. So I only have 14.2 kilometers concealment, which was messing me up a little bit. As you saw in the beginning, we took a salvo from a Yamato. We didn't really need to if I was paying more attention. I like this build a lot, but I'm not running survivability expert right now. I'm trying to save up another point to get top grade gunner. I'm trying to get as much DPM as possible since I'm also running the reload mod and not range. So that's why we're only getting 17 kilometers of range. Running range mod can be okay, I just like this closer play style that the smoke and the maneuverability enables. So getting closer, getting bigger, heavier hits in is why I like playing this ship. So that's the build I've got. Eye in the Sky just allows me to have more spotter planes more often when I need to use them, even though they don't quite last as long. I really like that skill. Expert Loader, of course, is going to be a given on this ship since there are some times you want to use AP and get Citadels. So here's the upgrades. You can see only one rudder mod. Since I'm using heavy HE and sap, I did think it was required to at least run this concealment mod instead of running the steering gears. But with steering gears on both of them, I think you get somewhere in the uh, seven or eight second rudder shift time. And since your turning radius is so tight, it's approaching destroyer levels actually, it's a very hard ship to hit when you have both rudder mods course we're running aiming systems as well. I think primarily you should be trying to use the sap in this ship. It's just way better than the armor piercing is. The only time I would really suggest using the AP is if you know you're going to get multiple citadels. Other than that, stick to the sap and have a good time. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.